everybody for joining in with us again as part of our continuing series where we're attempting to have intelligent conversations with people who have a wide variety of opinions on political division. You don't have to be for it. You don't have to be against it. But we do think if you're an American, you should be informed and have your own debates based upon information. With us today is David Horowitz, author of The Final Battle, The Next Election Could Be the Last. Let me show you a little bit of an introduction on that. Uh, David Horowitz has appeared on Frontline and C-SPAN. He's been around. Today we're talking about author of The Final Battle, The Next Election Could Be the Last. Uh, last. It's this book. The Final Battle exposes the real threat that Democrats pose to freedom. The rise of socialism and critical race theory coupled with threats to the Electoral College and Senate and independent judiciary and the integrity of the electoral system now threaten to destroy the traditions that bring Americans together, the heart of our democracy. Attacks on these quintessentially American customs codified by the Founding Fathers undermine the possibility of bipartisan solutions to common problems like viral pandemics and civil disorders. Americans now speak in different and antagonistic political languages, and the two parties are so polarized that the American way of life itself is at risk. In his devastating expose of the Democratic uh, the Democrats and the Fairy Schools, New York Times bestselling author David Horowitz reveals the hallmarks of their strategies, including the double standard in justice, Antifa and BLM versus January 6th, citizens as citizenship as disposable, granting non-citizens privileges like voting, welfare, and health care, so-called cancel culture and collusion in the defamation of conservative voices. Empires and states rise and fall while everybody's watching. Although the watchers may be surprised when the actual collapse occurs, with the hindsight provided by the end itself, everyone can see how it fell. Did we get anything wrong? Is there something you'd like to say about the introduction or the book? No, that's fine. Okay. Well, let's start with the book. Why is this upcoming election going to be the last one? For people who haven't had the chance to read the book or see some of the other interviews of you've done on that, briefly, what, what is the concern? Why is the next election two years from now going to be the last Let's take your introduction. The problem with the country is not that it's divided. You expect a free society and a true democracy to have many, many, many different points of view. You don't expect universal agreement. That's for totalitarian states. The problem is that the Democrats are a lawless. We're suffering from lawlessness. And the source of that lawlessness is the Democrat Party. They don't enforce the law in our cities, so we have record crime waves. They don't enforce our immigration laws, so we have an invasion of 5 million people, many of them under the control of criminal cartels, many of them just criminals themselves, fl flooding the country with poison, fentanyl poisons. They have the president silent. I mean, China is supplying all these poisons. Uh, that kills, the, you know, the statistics, more people are dying from fentanyl poisoning and they're largely youth than our soldiers in World War II. Oh, year wow. by year, the casualty rate is that high. And you have a president oh, who's God. in the pocket of the Chinese and doesn't say anything. So that, that's the real problem we face. I've written several books on the Democrats' drive to create a one-party state. Um, when Trump criticized uh, the rigged election of 2020, raised questions about the election, the immediate Democrat response is, he's an enemy of democracy. You're not allowed to criticize an election. The truth is that the Democrats have challenged the certification of electors for presidential elections in every single presidential election that Republicans have won since 1980. And one of the chief Democrat prosecutors, Jamie Raskin, led the challenge to Trump when Trump was elected in 2016. Right. He led a delegation to the floor of the House to, to demand the decertification of the electors. 
So you have a, a totally dishonest party. I mean, this is, it's really, it's, it's scarifying to see how, what we just have today, we have a new lie. I mean, everybody knew when they raided Trump's a former president's house, who was uh, Mar-a-Lago to get the classified documents. Everybody knew that the White House had to okay it. They denied it. Biden right. just said, I didn't know it at all. Now we know right. that he knew. Of course he knew. Right. Well, how many things are you going to lie about? Yeah, that and well, when Merrick so, Garland. That's so destructive of, of a society. That's the way banana republics operate. That's the way Xi Jinping operates. Lies about everything. And there's, there's nothing you can do about it in totalitarian China. But we used to have a country where a president would, could be criticized or an election challenged. It's just, anyway, that, that's why I wrote the book. Because if you lay it out, it, it, this book takes you from the 2020 election to, um, to roughly January 6th. Uh, and you see in the narrative how relentless the Democrats are at attacking the First Amendment, just the demonization of, of Republicans. Um, Trump was one of the most famous people in America before he ever ran. Nobody ever called him a rate and no non-extremist idiot ever called him a racist or a white supremacist or a white nationalist. I, I mean, just if I'm just against the Democrats. So that's just to discredit not only Trump, but all his supporters, the 75 million people who voted for him. And they tell lies just casually, just these news people. You know, it's like, oh, any Democrat can beat Trump. No, they can't. It's more likely that no Democrat can beat Trump. <laughs> if he was so easy to beat, do you think they'd be trying to destroy him as relentlessly as they are? It's a good if point. It's a good point. And, yeah. and then we have this, you know, you see they mobilized. This came after my book. But this racist pro-criminal prosecutor in New York, uh, Bragg, that what, and it's not just Bragg. This is the Democrat Party. They want to tie Trump up in court procedures so he can't run. I mean, there's never been a more blatant election interference in the history of the country than that. What got me was that when Donald Trump was elected, Democrats were saying he wasn't really elected. It's a fake election. I don't have to accept him. Not my president, not my legitimate president for one to two years. And then when Trump... They formed a resistance. They called it a resistance. Yeah, yeah. And then they completely forgot about that when That's Trump started correct. questioning the election. And I'm like, where do you think the... Repo and I'm not, for everyone who knows me, I'm not condoning what Trump did, but I am saying, where do you think Trump got that idea from? The people who did it just two years before, or he thought about it all on his own? I mean, let's let's really think about this. He got the idea because it was on national TV two years before, but everybody wanted to forget that in the mainstream news and just focus on he's the only one that's ever questioned an election. No, no, but as, no I said, as I said, the Democrats worse than that. The Democrat Party has formally challenged every presidential election and called for the decertification of the electors and their replacement since 1980. Every one that the Republicans have won, both Bush elections, anyway. So it's it's much worse than that. It's not a, it's not a mem remembering something somebody said. They participated in it. They had delegations go to the well of the House to demand the decertification of electors. And the last one was led by Jamie Raskin, who's the chief uh, accuser of Trump. Right. When you have a whole party that's committed to lying and to extra legal uh, methods. I mean, look at, look at this shooting in Nashville. These three nine-year-old kids 
who happen to be, well, it's not an accident that they were Catholics. There's a war on religion in our country, hmm. um, particularly the Christian the Jews are having a hard time too. Um, and the president doesn't visit the site. The White House makes the trans community, the, the murderer was a trans woman um, who killed these three kids. Uh, the president declares a day of in invisibility. That's a party line from the trans movement that this, uh, this I don't know, man, woman, whatever you want to call her, Audrey, the shooter, felt invisible. So the only way she could get visible is by murdering three nine-year-olds? How inhuman is that? And that's our president. And, and our government it is terrible. We, we, this is the worst period of American history ever. We've and never gone bad. through a period more difficult, civil war unrest in the 1960s. Why civil is war. this the worst period? Civil, the civil war, of course, war is dangerous. We lost sure, sure. But you can war. take the 1960s, Vietnam okay. War they or whatever. Patriots. They believed in the Constitution, the, the Southerners. And they had, and the, 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 they had a very hard time because, of course, the Declaration of Independence said all men are created equal. So that's that's where American racism came came from from the slave owners defending their system by saying blacks weren't equal. But that's different. They they tried to follow the Constitution. The Democrats have no respect for the Constitution. They think it's a white supremacist document. That's the teaching of critical race theory, which the, the Democrat Party supports and our military supports. And of course, our allies are all, you know, China's forming this global alliance against us. And we have no credibility any anymore. Why, why is the next election going to be the last? You've talked about a lot well, of disconcerting yes, trends. Are they coming well, to a hit soon? In this, in this, in the last chapter of this book, I, I tell a story, which I'll tell you in a second, uh, which shows the mentality that's, first of all, the effort to end elections has been there. You can, and you can see it, um, it, it's been there in the demonization. You can't demonize your opponents, and call them all racists and white supremacists and have a democracy. You just can't do it. And we have a consensus in America that racism is evil. Uh, not that everybody observes it, but that's a consensus. You get wiped out if you're a white racist in particular. Um, right. You know, okay. So, God, I forgot where I was going. What, well, just what, why all these trends that you're describing are bad, but they've gone on for a couple of years. Why is this coming to a head so soon? Well, it, if you, I, I've written other books, you know, my, I was brought up by communists. So I understand these people in the Democrat party very well. Um, and most Americans who have never been ideologues are bewildered by the, everybody refers to the insanity and the craziness. But if you're an ideologue, it's very easy to become insane and crazy. Um, Fair. Just is because you have these black, like white and black does not describe, you know, blacks think differently from each other. <laughs> so, They're not a monolith as uh, President Biden uh, suggested, or I believe someone close to him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, Okay, now this anecdote. January 2nd, that's the January 2nd before the infamous January 6th and okay. the demonstration in the Capitol. Okay. This happened to be the anniversary of Trump's assassination of General Soleimani. The Iranian terrorist is responsible for all the wounded warriors you see on television. And, right. and on January 2nd, the Iranian uh, dictator, Rouhani, 
declared that Trump will not only be removed from office because he lost the rigged election, but he will be removed from life because we cannot forgive the killing of Soleimani. So as you can imagine, the security teams in the White House scrambled. The head of the president's security is General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, chief military advisor to the president. So Milley went around the Capitol, and I, I have to say this information comes from a book uh, called I Can Fix This by two Washington Post reporters who interviewed everybody. Milley went around the White House in these security meetings describing Trump as Hitler and his supporters as Nazis. It, the Stop the spe Steal speech that Trump gave at the Ellipse, he said, uh, was the gospel of the Fuhrer. And he, he's the one responsible for spending half a billion dollars to ring the Capitol with barbed wire to defend against a domestic terrorist threat from the right that never, never happened, nor was going to happen. I mean, Democrats are so, their filters are so bad that they don't see that everybody can see Trump is leading a patriotic movement. Make America great again. You can you can't accuse him of being a Nazi. Um, anyway, that mentality. Now, Anderson Cooper and all these so-called liberal commentators on MSNBC, CNN, and so forth, they all praised Milley for doing this. That's treason what he did. They, they, they said he was following the Constitution. No, he was traducing the Constitution. So when you have that level of tre a treason mentality, and it, it flows, in my view, from people who regard the Constitution as a white supremacist document, it doesn't even contain the words white and black <laughs> because it isn't a white supremacist document. But in their eyes, uh, according to critical race theorists, the Constitution has no moral value whatsoever. One of, them, one of them wrote a book calling the Constitution trash, Ellie Mistel. So even with the Bill of Rights, is yeah. and then you have, after January sixth, AOC and se several other people I quote in my book talked about having uh, camps to to uh, deprogram Trump supporters. The deep, deep, of course, the only extremists in America are on the right. The deep, well, when you have people, and and uh, I, I quoted a uh, a Democrat uh, operative in California, high level operative, saying we have to study, you know, post-war Japan and post-war Germany, where they deprogrammed. <laughs> they had to have denazification projects. And that's the mentality. And I don't see any big dissents among Democrats. I mean, there's Joe Manchin and cinema, but that seems to be the extent of the... Why aren't people standing up and saying, you can't do this, you can't demonize your opponents, you can't lie so brazenly about them? I don't know. I, every day I get an email from Hakeem Jeffries, and every day it's a pack of lies. And I don't say, I say this as somebody, I've been on both sides of the political spectrum. I understand how difficult it is to respect somebody that you violently disagree with, but you have to do it in a democracy. And we've been pretty good, you know, there's been all, all kinds of name calling through history, but we've been pretty good about it. And, and, and this is such an illegal administration. First acts of Biden was to destroy our southern border. Completely illegal for him to do so. And we know it from Obama. Obama, when he, he, he gave residency, he had altered the immigration status of, of the DACA people, the, 
the DACA youth, 800,000 of them. For the year before that, he was telling his followers, I, I would like to do this, but, but I, can't. I can't do it because of the Constitution. Right. And then they got away with it because Republicans are pussies. I don't know what's wrong with Republicans. He got, got partially away with, with it. He expanded it to 4 million parents. And that, that was struck down. I mean, the constitutional scholar president said, I can't do it constitutionally, then went back on his word. Exactly. And banked by the Supreme Court, who said, no, you can't do that constitutionally for at least half of DACA. So I thought it was a big embarrassment for him. But liberals don't even know that story, basically. No, exactly. Well, and, yeah. They're completely ignoramuses. Is He's, this why you're so hated from the left? Is that you came from the left, you were oh, yeah. on that side, you understood the concepts, and now right. like Tucker Carlson, you're exposing the emperor has no clothes. I'm the chief defector, but it goes chief way defector. back. Yeah, you're the number one defector. It goes way back. Peter Collier and I wrote a book um, which came out in the 80s called Destructive Generation about the 60s and revealing the malice and violence. Uh, you know, where does white skin privilege come from? It comes from the weathermen who were a violent uh, branch of SDS. There was an election in which elected these people to power in Students for a Democratic Society, which was the biggest college organization um, and they invented this term, white, uh, white skin privilege. And they discussed things like killing all white babies um, because whiteness was... We, we have about 200 college courses called whiteness studies. Now, unlike black studies or Chicano studies, which celebrate the ethnic group, the, the agenda of whiteness studies is to, I, this is direct quote, abolish whiteness or abolish the white race. We have a, that kind of race war going on in our country. It's you know open season on white people. And the irony is that we live in a country in which slavery was an African institution and all the slaves, virtually, who were brought to America as slaves were bought at slave auctions. They were enslaved by black Africans and freed by white people at enormous cost. 360,000 mainly white Union soldiers gave their lives to free the slaves. If anything is due white America, it's a little gratitude. If you are black and descended from a slave, uh, you owe your freedom to Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and those Union soldiers. But this is a forgotten legacy. I mean, it, we have this extortion movement called reparations. If you want reparations, sue the Confederacy, <laughs> not the government. Interesting that concept. Yeah. So much that sacrificed so much. They robbed blacks of the blacks of the. Uh, been here longer than anybody, came before the Mayflower in 1619. And by the way, those were indentured servants that the New York Times right. called slaves. Right, uh, right. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. And there used to be a period before slavery when white people were indentured servants and black people. But oh, in, in Virginia at the time, the major part of the labor force was white indentured servants. Yeah. And yeah. you get free after a five-year period. And you yeah. We, we, we forget that period that there was a period where black people and white people were literally equally indentured. If you listen carefully, you don't have to listen that, that carefully. The Democratic Party is a party of hate. Everything the left does is driven by hate. Um, this trans movement is incredibly aggressive. There's almost nobody in America who doesn't say live and let live. If you, if you want to put on a dress and you're mail, go ahead. We've reached an incredible point in that regard, but it's not enough for them. <laughs> they, they want everybody to think the way they do. I mean, they're true totalitarians. 
Let me get to the meat and potatoes, if you will, that sure. I ask everybody who's part of this series. These are the standard questions that we ask everybody. When Marjorie Taylor Greene came out, sitting Congress member, on President's Day and called for a national divorce, a lot of the response from news agencies on the left and the right was the same. There's no political division in America. We basically all get along. She's just making this up to benefit herself. A huge political division, but I'm totally against them. Just breaking up this country. Okay. But you do agree there is political division, but her solution isn't the right one. Never been a, this is at the level of the, it's worse than the Civil War in that the left does not believe in American principles. Like free speech. I mean, it's not like they hide their agendas. They wanted to destroy every aspect of the checks and balance system. That's what preserves our democracy, prevents, prevents the centralization of power in Washington. So they're against the Electoral College, which is in the Constitution and designed to get people to come make compromise. Uh, they, they keep attacking the Senate as undemocratic. Um, and you could, I mean, I, no, no point going on and on, but one, one could go on and on with their attacks on the basic principles of the American Constitution. That's, that's a deeper division than, like I say, the Civil War. How do we heal the division? When Marjorie Taylor Greene made her call for national divorce, there was a... Well, U it's a big party. If the Democrat Party, if I saw the Democrats are like a communist party, they have a party line and everybody toes it. They all march in lockstep. You know, Republicans at least have the grace that they disagree with each other. Sometimes it's very frustrating for people like me, but they, they disagree with each other. So Marjorie Taylor Greene's view is very short-sighted. I'm against it. Um, she's singled out because she's ballsy. And she said some stupid things. I agree with that. But if political division is bad now, and her solution for separation isn't right, how do we heal the country and bring people back together? How do we restore the integrity of the electoral system? You know, the Democrats... People ask the wrong question about the 2020 election. Was it fixed? Nobody knows for sure. Nobody can say with certainty because there never was an audit uh, of the voting. So you, you, and it was the closest. People never mention how close this election was. Right. 159 right. million votes and, and, and 42,000 was Biden's margin of victory, 0.027%. So slight shifts in the battleground states would have delivered the election to Trump, despite the ballot box stuffing and so forth. Never been examined, but you, you can ask, was there a massive campaign to fix the election? And there's no question there was. The Democrats sent out a task force of 600 lawyers and 10,000 volunteers to change the election laws in, in uh, battleground states and in, in any state they could. Sorry about my nails. Uh, that's fine. It's fine. a FedEx truck, what can I say? Is this tape? It's fine. It's, fine. it's part of the new COVID. Is this tape? Well, this is, yeah, but it's fine. Yes, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, we're gonna have to do this for a second. All right, we're going to mute that for a second while he takes care of the dogs. This is the new era post-COVID. Everybody's at home. Uh, I think you've seen the number of interviews that people do where they have screaming babies on their lap. It's it's the way it is now. He'll be right back with us in just a second. Uh, please make comments and we will share them. And we have a few more questions uh, for David Horowitz coming up. We're going to be asking 
Uh, how do you fix political division? Can can it be fixed? Oh, here we go. I think there are a lot of people on the left. First of all, the Democrat Party is run with an iron hand. Uh, if you step out of line, well, look what they did to Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, yes, yes, you know, he was. They made, and Bernie number two, number two in the party uh, as a freshman, I think. And she stepped out of line on the war issue, and that's it. She's gone. Yeah. So, I think, I think the people. I I also think that Democrats, like like everybody else, want to be safe in their homes, in big cities which are run by Democrats, and are violent and criminal. Uh, I I think it just takes time to change people's minds. But the only way to end this is for people to understand that the basis of the Constitution is compromise. The founders feared, the, what they feared the most was factions. They feared a majority faction getting control of the government and using its power to suppress opposition. And they called that the tyranny of the majority. And right, ah. and right now we're living under a tyranny of the Democrat majority. So, I, oh, sorry. yeah, I think it can, you know. It, it, we could come back together if we can get everybody to appreciate and respect the importance of the Constitution and that we should all follow a similar process and agree to it. Civil disagreement and not a double standard where Black Lives Matter criminals and rioters and killers walk free and are bailed out of jail by Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party uh, and Republicans who've done nothing wrong. Like uh, I, there's a kind of consensus that Trump is not guilty of any crime that Bragg has got his hands around. Um, and just respect that. You don't, you don't like Donald Trump. That's okay. Vote to vote for somebody else. I mean, that, that's, the American way, you have to have faith in people's judgment, ultimately. I thought so. I mean, I, so what I tell people is I'm a liberal, but I have two eyeballs and they work. And the Sun News article being suppressed wasn't right. Ray, FBI. The mere, fact that, that, the mere fact that you have me on says to me you're a good liberal. I, I object to the use of the term liberal for people who are vindictive bigots. Oh well, I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not but, that. I, no, but uh, you know who I'm. Talking yeah, about. I, 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 I didn't like Trump, but when the FBI raided his house, that That's, looked like a, a Latin American failed democracy. And then when Joseph Biden had eight times more sensitive documents in other locations, and he got zero raids, I was like, no, that were, looks political. And, and parked in his garage, and then. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and fellow liberals go, oh, it's totally different. Uh, like, well, I don't care if it's totally different. It what did he, what did he get for the 30 months? You know, this guy's on the payroll of the Chinese. What's he giving to them? And, and the thing that got me was none of the liberals cared about how it looked. They go, well, he didn't technically do anything wrong. I go, but doesn't this give the message to two to 300 million people of bias? Shouldn't we try to avoid bias? Shouldn't we try to look like we're being even healed on everything? I don't see I, anyone caring about that anymore. I, I, I'm rooting for the Matt Taibis, the Schellenbergers, people like you, Harold Rhodes, whom I, I've admired way for a very long time. I disagree with him on a lot. Um, but it's mainly, you know, I'll think, oh, well, that's a little naive. I don't, but but I like him, and I, I want principled liberals. I believe they are out there. They are, but it's 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 a rare group, like like uh, truffles in the forest. You you got to go hunt them. They don't grow in clusters. Uh, how do we get liberals, let's say, or all Americans, to have the same appreciation of the Constitution as a guiding document? and the election process. How do we bring, I get the ideas we can, we to we bring, how do we bring them together? How do we do that? Defund the schools. 
The schools, are, I've, I've written five books I wrote on the leftist takeover of the universities. These are not schools anymore. They're indoctrination and recruitment centers for the political left. There are no conservatives on fact. I, I spoke at Dartmouth. This is my last, I've spoken about on about 400 campuses. My last speech was at Dartmouth a few years ago. And uh, the left came and they, they didn't want to listen to anything. They just wanted to obstruct. So they turned on their computers and put porn films on and turned the volume up. And there was a vice president in charge of student affairs there. And lesbians got up on the chairs and started tonguing each other as though that was going to upset me. And uh, I could, people marched out, made speeches. And the, the uh, vice, vice principal in charge of student affairs thought this was funny. He thought this was all, I, you couldn't have an intellectual discussion. And I talked to the conservative kids. I said, do you have a Cold War course? And they said, yeah, but it's taught by somebody, a Marxist who wanted the Russians to win. <laughs> I, brilliant, 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 brilliant. That's just great, man. So they have no idea about the excesses of East Germany and the USSR. No, awesome. No. Awesome. Well, who needs and, to know what lessons it was? Davis was a communist hack, is an icon. I mean, just as an example, she's a legend. They have, um, you know, whole areas of uh, shrines to her at various universities. It's ridiculous. If you read her stuff, it's just hack garbage. Well, I think your point is that the students should be able to listen to both sides. Instead of saying, oh, you can hear this, but we're, you know, cut that off. I went, I spoke at the law school at the University of Texas in Austin. And uh, the head of the communications department, which is the credentialing, de credentialing department for media people, which is why the media has gone so bad. She led these protests. They chanted shame on Horowitz to start. I didn't get to open my mouth and say what I thought. And I had no idea who I am. And now it's gotten much worse. It's gotten really violent. And you know, that dean at Stanford siding with the disruptors. What kind of lawyers are these people going to be? Or judges, even worse. I don't. I'm, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because that's a whole other show. I will point out that I don't think it's a good idea that we now have Supreme Court justices who can be confirmed even though they refuse to answer questions and defy terms, even though the entire American legal system is based upon defining terms. I, I not only I agree, but it's even worse with Ketanji, with Brown Jackson. She's a critical race theorist. She believes that the Constitution is an oppressive white supremacist document. And our job on the Supreme Court is to defend it. Great. And and the whole Democrat, and you know, they're going to stack the Supreme Court. I, I hope what you're saying is not true. I hope that she's able to be somewhat impartial and look at previous laws. Anybody that's a woman, it's, it's easy. It's, they, they have XX chromosomes instead of XY. Uh, I, we, I, we can't go there. Can't go there. Let me let me ask you this question. Um, people have said the way to heal political divisions is federalism. Let's just have more federalism. Is that the answer? Well, I think it's saving us right now. Uh, you know, you get decent governors. Um, you have the division and separation of powers is so crucial to preserving individual liberty, which is what our system is about. I wonder, I, I, you know, New York and California are pretty powerful states. And if it came to that, if, it, that, that, if there was a kind of raw power conflicts, um, my guess is it depends on who's in power in Washington. If it's the left, they'll send in the army. That'll be the end of it. 
So right. I, I don't like that as a, I, I would like to see the schools liberated, the teachers unions destroyed. The teacher, the, 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 te the teachers have shown, the, the teacher unions have shown how terrible they are. They robbed billions of dollars in pandemic uh, relief. Uh, they shut down schools without any medical reason. They screwed these young kids. They don't care about the kids at all. And they're indoctrinating them and they're, they're turning them against their parents. Um, so I would like to see the K-12 system liberated and also the universities. I don't wanna see federal money or state money going to a school like Harvard, which just, the, the Harvard Crimson did a story, a, a, a poll, and they found that seven, only 7.1% 7 of incoming freshmen identified as conservatives. So they're not, not only are they have their faculties all raving leftists or mostly raving leftists, but they're, their, their, their um, what do you call it, uh, recruitment policy is also discriminatory against conservatives. Um, how, that has, that, that's the antithesis of scholarship. You want to hear other opinions. Nobody has a monopoly of the truth. Do, do you think we can return to where the federal government gives less money to all these institutions? States have to run it more financially and states make more. Yeah, I, I think that, that they should withhold all taxpayer funds from all universities whose faculties and they can give them 10 years to get their faculties looking even roughly like America. You can't have 7% of your students uh, your brightest students are, are conservatives. Conservatives are bright people. You have law schools where you have maybe one, maybe they'll have one conservative on the faculty. These kids go through four years of education and never hear a conservative viewpoint. And then they're encouraged by their deans to go when, when a conservative organization invites a visiting lecturer. Uh, they were encouraged by them to hold these demonstrations that shut down all intellectual discourse. So and culturally, so when I was a radical. I was a radical in the '60s. I always wanted to hear what my political opponents had to say. I thought it would make me a better. That's how better. I view it. That's how I view it. You want to know what the people who don't agree with you have to say, and what are their arguments? You want to be prepared to debate those. I agree. You're very rational. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> University of Southern California. And it was one of the last fair, conservative, liberal, balanced universities in California. And that was about 20 years ago. Yeah. I, and even I, then they were talking about- I was there more recently and it's changed. I haven't been there. And this was two decades ago and they were talking about, we're losing our 50-50 balance between liberal and conservative professors. They were worried about that 20 years ago, I can only imagine. Yeah, those people have retired and the ones who replaced them are radicals. Well, you know, but, it. but culturally, I want to ask you, culturally, yeah. do you think it's possible for us to culturally come back together and culturally start appreciating the same things together? Or are we too polarized now? Of course. You and I wouldn't disagree on a lot. So <laughs> we're proving it. Right, we're having a conversation, so yeah. people can come back together. Yeah, but that's us. And like you said, you said, you know, you're you're kind of. Uh, I hope I hope. I, here's what I, out here's like, what I, I really used, have. A here's what I used to. I never imagined in my wildest dreams that things could get as bad as this as fast as they have. But wow. I used to think of America and the, and if a if a could survive. Uh, leftist movement. And I said, you know, America is not the Weimar Republic. These are fiercely independent people. We've had this frontier. They distrust government in their, their very nature. I, But now we have these technologies, these spy technologies. Mm. It's all come at once. It's just way too much. But, you know, you never know. You just never know. 
if we don't have federalism, if the federal government still continues to fund the schools and programming and things basically stay the same as they are, do you see political division getting worse in America? Yeah. And, uh, the end, oh, we're, we're in the early stages of a fascist state. No, no democratic government would do what the Biden regime has done. Um, the treatment, of, just the treatment of Trump is, is a good example. Um, but, you know, look what they did to Peter Navarro, a businessman advisor to the president who didn't answer a subpoena because of executive privilege or whatever, had a legal dispute. And they jumped him on coming off an airplane and put him in leg, uh, what do you call them? Leg irons. That was just to humiliate him. That's what fascist governments do. And you know, and there's an awful lot of really terrible stories. I uh, uh, that that re reveal a uh, um, you know boot mentality. I do want to back you up on something. So I am uh, Latino, and I remember asking my abuela, my grandma, "Why are there so many Latin people here?" And she said, "Well, it's because America invaded every country." in Latin America at some point, and now the governments are destabilized. And so then I asked my mom for a subscription to Foreign Affairs Magazine when I was 18, and I started to study failed democracies in Latin America and how they looked. And I have to tell you, the last five years, I've seen a lot of America acting like failed Latin democracies from the 80s and 90s. Uh, we're going to round up our opponents. We're going to make lists of them. We're going to prosecute that's, them. Let's put them in prison. That's because of the weakness of the American leadership. I I try to tell you, this is not a good sign. This is not a good place to go. No, I've, I've always I, I I've taken to saying that the Hispanic community is going to save America. Hey. It, has, it has the values um, that that are necessary: strong family values, good work ethic. And so forth, and, and they're patriots. So, you know, I think in an odd way, America has really, in its way, transcended the race issue. If you look at actual people and the way they interact with each other, I mean, you know, you turn on the TV, you would think that half the country is black. In the um, in the ads, they're all middle class. They're doctors. You know, they're living, and uh, pe people are so, you know, all our youth or the icons they have, they're black and Hispanic athletes. That's that's who they want to be when they grow up. <laughs> I, I mean, I wanted to be interested. Yeah, I'm always in, you know, I myself, I think I've got, can't keep track, but I think I have four black grandchildren. Awesome. Filipino, three Filipino grand grandchildren and <laughs> how Californian of you. Yes. I, I mean, that is a compliment in a good way. Yeah. So. Uh, what? I think I'm basically out of questions. A lot of the other people I interviewed would give halfway answers, or I think they were not willing to say the ugly truth with 100% no varnish. And you seem to be willing to call the ugliness out. I, I think- uh, I swore when I left the left that I was gonna to talk to the left the way it talks to America. <laughs> uh, it's kind of my it? karma. I, I, you know, I, I have a niche operation. I've, I've failed miserably. I mean, I'm trying to get Republicans to be more aggressive. Um, and call things by their right names. Was uh, I actually studied Chinese in college, and uh, Confucius said that in order to restore justice, you have to rectify the names. You have to call things by their right names. Malcolm X said that too. Uh, Oliver was Cromwell was gonna was a dictator, kind of ruler of England, and he was going to get a portrait. And he had a lot of warts on his face. And they said, do you want us to like, you know, make you look a little prettier? And he goes, no, paint me warts 
and all because he wanted it to be realism. I'm sensing a lot of realism from you. Just a, I'm not going to give you the fluff. Here's how I see it. You don't necessarily have to agree, but this is what I am. And if you can't handle it, maybe you shouldn't be part of the conversation. I, I think that's refreshing. I don't see a lot of people doing that on the left. Or the right. They don't seem to be willing to be honest. I have respect. People are scared. They, they can really, your life can be ruined really easily. Um, I have a son who uh, is very successful in the music business, and he, um, he, he, he challenges me on this cancel culture. He thinks that America is such an open place still. Um, and he gave me this example. Do you know the singer Morgan Whalen? He's a country and Western singer who is a big star. And then he did a song, I have never heard the song, so I don't know what the context is, but he did a song and he used the N-word in the song. Mm. And he was canceled by every state, country, yeah. music, radio, canceled him. And now he's bigger than ever. Oh, and I see, okay. My son says, if you, you, yeah, you create your own platforms. The internet is, well, it gives it, it gives platforms to crazy people, <laughs> um, but you can you can create your own destiny that way. So, I there's always hope on the horizon. I just uh, I just wish this administration were over sooner. I'm very worried about China and uh, Iran. Is replacing Biden going to fix it? I mean, is the Democratic Party not aligned with him? Oh, no. He's going to go a long way. Because, well, first of all, Biden isn't there. So somebody's sure, sure. controlling him. Sure. And but if can't... the Democratic Party were to lose, there are plenty of people in the Democrat Party who are smart. There's a, there's a lot of smart businessmen that understand that we need fossil fuels. <laughs> um, so I, I think things will correct themselves fairly rapidly. And the fringe will be seen as a fringe. What they've done is they've suppressed, well, the Tulsi Gabbards. You know, I, I have my strong disagreements with Tulsi over the war. Um, but I, I was shocked. I mean, she's, she's such an appealing figure. She's so intelligent. Um, and they just threw they her out. Destroyed her, yeah. After she, she took out Kamala Harris, they the party lines, and you can imagine what that does to people with lesser talents. Uh, you know, and, and the thing about her is, she was a Democrat. I've talked to a lot of Republicans who said they liked her, didn't agree with everything, but they would respect her as president. She seemed to be one of those candidates that could pull people from the left and the right together, and. They have destroyed her ability to run for office and made sure she has no real chance. So that's somebody who could bring us together. And I see the system making sure you never get that person. What I, I chance just, do we have? We're going to come together. You know, I, I think this historical moment will pass. The Trump hatred is really off the charts. And it's I, I, I have a a book which will be coming out in the fall, which I took on Sam Harris. Sam Harris is a very intelligent guy. He's a very measured person. He's very independent. He, even in print has said that, you know, saying that Trump said there are good guys on both sides, Nazis and, and whatever. I, yeah, that was the uh, whole story that Trump denounced and that he was talking about the people came to preserve the statues, but it doesn't matter anyway. But he 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 said that um, Trump's sins over Trump University dwarf anything that Hunter Biden has done. Um, so I, I would I would accept if Hunter Biden had the bodies of children, I literally said this in his basement, I would give him a pass in order to get Trump. That is so irrational. The Trump University, Trump University, it, they, he was sued because it wasn't a university. 
And because he didn't show up as he was, the students were given to expect. And he paid a $25 billion fine. But that's very different from selling American secrets to foreign powers, which is what Hunter Biden has done. I, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, and the Sun News article shouldn't have been suppressed. That so I, should come out. I think once we're past the Trump era. Um, when, uh, is I, that coming soon? I, I mean, are they going to calm I mean, down on Trump soon? Really? I can win the election. So people forget that 75 million people voted for him after four years of unbelievable right. slander. And not only that, um, he's the only president in the history of the United States who increased his vote in the second term, and he did it by 11 million votes. Right. So I, I just... Right. But you never can tell politics is it's unpredictable. Right. I hope somebody's allowed to come on the horizon to bring us together. I saw how they trashed Tulsi Gabbard. I saw how they trashed Andrew Yang's new party aimed at bringing people together. Yeah, Andrew Yang is another one. I forgot about him. But I so hopefully there's something we haven't seen before. And hopefully they're going to let that person in, even though they basically show that they're not willing to do that and have destroyed everybody who's tried in the last couple of years. Well, I think if we understood more the power circle around Biden who's running him, uh, we would know better. You know, they may not be able to stand on their own. Uh, I'm getting a question from the audience. Have you met Glenn Beck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He came to my house. Uh, I like okay. Glenn. Okay. Good. I haven't followed him in recent years, so I don't know what he's saying. He was talking about political division and that it's getting pretty bad too. Um, that's yeah. about all I know about what he said. Uh, but uh, any any thoughts or feelings on, you know, Glenn Beck is saying political division is pretty bad and maybe we need, he didn't say secession. He said maybe some sort of legal moving to different states like we have been doing. Yeah. The last like I say, the, the, the left will control big states like New York and California, and if, if they get, if they have the White House, they, they can crush the states. Uh, we're not going to have a civil war. The federal government is too powerful and too well armed, and too firmly, <laughs> and it's firmly in the hands of leftists, incompetent leftists like Milley and Austin is just a horror. I pointed Harris. That's my favorite horrible leftist. I mean, she's done horrible at the federal level she's um, an camilla she's an idiot yeah and that's, that's embarrassing. She to be at the federal level Absolutely. Dare say this the diversity mantra of the biden administration is so racist it's not only racist against whites it's racist against blacks and and minorities i mean could you get a more bull-faced liar from the Hispanic community than Mayorkas? I mean, it's just- No, he it's, sucks. It's He's horrible. Terrible. They're embarrassments. Kareem Jean-Pierre, the worst person. Mayorkas is an embarrassment. Harris is an embarrassment. Both of them came from yeah, California. Them absolutely failed. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. It's something you get up there and then I think, I think they're told to lie. Skin color and get a <laughs> good- Well, uh, you know, the other thing was that in California, we were particularly aware of this when they were talk talking about Kamala Harris and they tried to promote it here and it didn't really go because in California, there were three other African-American women who were smarter, more experienced and more capable than Kamala. They just weren't as pretty. And so many of us were going, you couldn't pick, you have to get, you have to pick a black woman. Okay. There's four in California. You pick the dumbest one. And there's three others that are known to be much more intelligent. You didn't even look at them. Uh, it's just, it's just terrible. It's I, just it didn't seem good. Well, we'll, we'll, um, we're going to end it there. Um, I would like to ask you any last minute comments, any last minute thoughts, or my favorite question to ask guests. Okay. 
Is there a thought you'd like to leave the viewers with that maybe a week from now they go, you know, I don't, I don't remember the whole conversation, but I remember this one guy and he said something and I just can't get it out of my head five well, days from now. What would I, that be? I think, so I, had, I, I didn't know you when I agreed to come on the air. So I think what we've demonstrated uh, is that we can get along. And that, that's the biggest, that's the question you're asking. The answer is yeah, if they'll let us. <laughs> wow, that was sobering and ominous at the same time. Yeah. We can get along if they will let us. Yes. Ah, wow. Okay, well, I'm going to send you a copy of the video. I'm not going to ask you now on camera, but if you could think about anybody else that you know who might be willing to be part of having an honest conversation, uh, we would love to talk to them. You had Larry Elder on? No, I would love to. Larry, you know, I'm just you use my name. We're good friends. Okay, okay. Um, all right. I will email you today with a copy of the video, and I really, really appreciate it. We were talking to David Horowitz. He is the author of The Final Battle, The Next Election Could Be the Last, and you can pick that up on Amazon. There's a copy of the book there. Also, if you look at the video here in the description, there is a link directly to the Amazon page where you can purchase Mr. Horowitz's book directly. So we appreciate that. Um, we'll leave it there. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay.